Hey, Rob, did you see that Google Meet is now available in Google Classroom? Yeah, I did see that. That's pretty incredible. It makes it so easy. Well, what should I use? Should I use Google Classroom's Meet feature or should I use Zoom when I want a video conference with my students? Well, that's really up to you. Both are great. Zoom is easy to set up. The kids don't need to log in anything. You can even uh, generate a background. You can have breakout rooms. There's a chat feature that the students can chat directly to the teacher. It's pretty cool. Yeah, but Meet seems like it's pretty simple. It looks like I can just turn on a link within Classroom and share that link with my students. That's true too. I guess it's I guess it's up to you to decide which one you want to use. Let's look at some of the details of Google Meet. First off, let's get to a Google Classroom. You probably saw one of these uh, settings. If you go to your gear, Google Meet is now available. But before you start and generate a link, you want to click on Learn More. This will give you some of the finer details. Notice this article is for teachers. West Genesee already has Google Meet turned on, but before you start, you want to review these best practices. Uh, one of the key things you want to understand is that in some cases, the students will may be able to rejoin a meeting after they leave. So as a teacher, you want to make sure you're the last person to leave. And you can review all of those details here in some of these, um, some of these tips. And notice if you scroll down, there's specific directions for turning on Meet, sharing and hiding a link, copying a link, and so forth. So please make sure you review these before you start. Secondly, let's look at specifically in a classroom how this might work. If this is brand new and you've never done this before, you're gonna be in your settings and you're gonna click on the Generate Meet link. And when you do so, you're gonna see that a unique link is generated, but you can copy it or reset it. Notice also that it's visible to students. So let's see exactly what that means. Let me save the setting. Remember, the link is turned on. It's visible to students. We're going to save it. And notice I did not copy this link anywhere, but it did put the link in my banner. If I was a student in this class, let's just take a look at it as if we're a student. The student is also going to see the link in their banner. I did not post anything to the stream, yet the, here is the link. And if a student clicks on it, you'll notice the code does not work. That's because the teacher has not yet joined the meeting. So let's close this window and return back to the teacher's view. And if the teacher clicks the link and joins the meeting, Let's just disable the volume here. And we'll refresh the student view. And now that the teacher is here, the student can click on the link and can join now. And it tells you that the teacher is in this call. Let's hang up as if we're a student. Let's see another way to share this. Let's see what happens if the teacher leaves the meeting. So here's the teacher view. We're going to hang it up. We'll go back to our home screen. And now, if we're a student and try to get back in, that same message should appear. And it does not. So yes, the teacher has left. The student can still get back in. So what should the teacher do? Well, back in settings, the teacher can scroll down and can scramble the code or can simply make the code not visible to students. Now in the same exact meeting, here in the student view, if the student tries to click on it, yes, the code has changed. Thought we said we're gonna make it invisible to students. Did we not do that? Yeah, we turned it off for students, so if we refresh the page, does this eliminate the student view of it? Looks like it does not, but here's the student trying to get into a, a meeting. And again, they're not permitted because the teacher scrambled the code. And quite frankly, the code should be invisible to students. Oh, I know, we didn't save it. 
Now, if we look at the student view and refresh the page, the code should be invisible altogether. Sure enough, it's no longer there. Another technique you could use as a teacher would be to go to your settings. Let's generate a new unique link. Let's make it, let's keep it invisible to students actually. Let's copy that link. We'll save everything. And now in the classroom stream, we'll say join me today at two o'clock. And we're gonna post the link to that meeting and share it. And we're gonna to go to the student view. Let's try to get in as a student before the teacher arrives. Sure enough, we're not able to. Let's close some of these. Let's have the teacher go in first. We'll join the meeting. And now let's try to go in as if we're the student now that the teacher is here. Student's gonna join now. I'm gonna get rid of that microphone. And sure enough, now that the teacher is here, the student can in fact join. Once we're done, last step for the teacher, you want to go back to those settings and make sure that you scramble your code or reset it and re keep it uh, invisible to students from this point forward until you're ready to have another meeting. So again, which one should you use? The, I guess the answer is whichever one you're most comfortable with. Thanks for listening, and I hope you found